This is Plus TV Africa, where big stories live. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time, as we analyze some of the biggest entertainment stories and trending lifestyle opinions. My name is Elsie Godwin, and to do the analysis and talking with me, I've got my very interesting co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshonke. What's going on? Hello. How are you doing? Wow. No gang gang this morning. Mm. Mm. You, why is your own gang gang? Mine is gang gang. <laughs> gang gang gang. I hope you're good though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to look good. <laughs> you're trying to look good. Wow. Yes, or I you're am. trying to be good. No, I'm trying to look good. So you're not good. Uh, I'm not sure. Mm. Who's listening? Mm? Surprise at the sm surprise. This morning, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Maybe you will be the one surprise me. You never can tell, but it's okay. I surprise you every day, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 okay, moving on with some good news, by the way. Snatch um, becomes first African to top Billboard USA for Christian songwriter category. The USA Billboard ranked award winning gospel singer and songwriter Osinachi Joseph, popularly known as Snatch, as the number one Christian songwriter globally for her song Waymaker. According to the data released in May, she has dominated the charts for the past seven weeks. Waymaker was released in December 2015 and has been covered by a number of globally acclaimed Christian music artists such as Michael W. Smith and Bethel Music, among others. That can only be God. Because the song has been <laughs> okay, okay. Waymaker. <laughs> because the song has been since song, 2015, actually, like. and it's so amazing that it's just getting this international the words are powerful. recognition. And then there's been several covers. I just found that out recently as well mm -hmm. that a lot of um, international artists have done different covers to that song. So it's actually that. Big. And the covers as well are on the um, Billboard mm -hmm. Top One, mm -hmm. Top Ten. Mm -hmm. It's quite amazing. Yes. And it's kudos really amazing. to um, Pastor Chris Oyakilome as well, which she, she will never stop talking about that. But um, that's one thing he has done for the, um, mm -hmm. should I call it the gospel music industry mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He actually used his platform or his church to push their uh, their talents. He also this um guy, what's his name now? Uh, Frank, Frank Edward, Edward was also Edward, from there. Yeah. And he's he he's not doing it. There are some um churches that would have talented people um as this, but they are not ready to push them as mm. an individual um They're talent. They to want them to be part of you know but he gave them that um I think he even paid for their studio sessions, did a lot for them to make sure that they are um who they are today and I think kudos to him for that. Mm. And then I think um this would also help a lot of upcoming artists that want to go into the um, gospel music space and they're scared like, okay, if I'm not doing circular music, I probably won't be successful in the mm -hmm. music industry. I think Sinatra has broken all those boundaries um, from being the second highest viewed video on YouTube um, after David O's is a follow Eve. Mm -hmm. And then this, I think is just really commendable. And it's also the third most streamed song on YouTube globally. Mm. which makes it <laughs> even more amazing so mm -hmm. i just think that if whatever you want to do whether it's gospel whether it's um the circular space just do it and just and do it right yeah and just do it right come correct i always um like to look at like the music and the formation of it i think Waymaker, especially if you're looking at it in a gospel sense, is it's perfect in its sense. It's quite simple actually. If you look at it, there's nothing like woo, -woo about it. Um, and I remember when I saw this title, I was like, oh, woo -woo. like you know, it just came some, back to me. Yeah, like. just some songs that are very like extra. If, that, if you make it, but this song is very simple. It's very straightforward. And the word, I think, it, what I really like about it that it was written with um, precision. Like mm. she wasn't just like trying to just throw it around um, lyrics. But I think what really did it for the Christian sphere is that it allows you to worship. Mm -hmm. Because for me, there's bigger lyrics that have moved me more. A good example is that one billion, one times billion. I think that song was like yeah, extremely so like, powerful. Mm -hmm. She's powerful. Yes. And the words are powerful. Yes. Also. And I don't get tired of it. Like I, every time I listen to that song, I kind of see one, something that I didn't see the, 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 before that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what the reason why this song is making more is that it's not about the song anymore. Because one billion is ab one billion is about the song. You have to listen to the lyrics. But this one allows you to really take it personally and make it yours. Yeah. Um, and it, I think it's one of those songs that'll be very like um, timeless. Like it will always um, fit the mood and be relevant throughout. And I, it, it's nice to have a Nigerian give the world that. So kudos mm. to her in regards to that. You said everything I wanted to say about. Um, 
Pastor Chris. Um, mm-hmm. That's something I know uh, he, he does because they're, they're huge in my campus in South Africa. And you know, something I knew that he always like spent a lot of time on talent and really giving people space to be almost funky is the word, like apart from just church. I have to say the House on the Rock also does a good job with that as well. There's a few other churches mm-hmm. as well. So if people can start to like follow that, we could be breathing really like powerful Christian musicians. Mm. And okay. also for me, that song is not just um, easy to worship with, it's, it gives a level of hope. Mm. So when you listen to it, it reminds you of the times that um, you can say God has come through for you and you know that he will definitely come through whatever it is you're going through. So it's one of my go-to songs when I want to start um, listening to a worship song. I start with So Will I actually, yeah. the one you're talking about a billion times and yeah. then I move to Waymaker and like that. So congratulations to Sinach and thank you for paving the way and um, should we say thank God for his grace in your life as yeah. well. Okay, moving on. Kevin Spacey compares his job loss from COVID um, from COVID nineteen crisis. Okay, no, he compares the job loss from COVID nineteen crisis to his downfall due to sexual assault allegations. In a video recorded from home for a German business conference, he encouraged people to use this time to reflect on self as the most important thing in life is our health and the health of our loved ones. Stating that he does not aim to sugarcoat the pandemic, he said he hopes that he can encourage people to see an opportunity in all of this. He said, and I quote, and so um, while we may have found ourselves in similar situations, albeit for very different reasons and circumstances, I still feel that some of the emotional struggles are very much the same. And so I do have this empathy for what it feels like to suddenly be told um, that you can't go back to work or that you might lose your job and it's a situation you have absolutely no control over end of quote he ended the video by encouraging kindness and um, quote even though we do want to uh, conduct ourselves with the appropriate social distancing we can still be kind because kindness at any distance brings us closer end of quote that's like a 10 minutes long mm. video and I, I think it was really powerful as well mm. Uh, e. yeah. E. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'm not too sure. Are you about start speaking? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of disagree totally. to that. Yeah, I understand, really deeply understand where he's coming from, but it's false. You cannot compare rape allegations to a global pandemic. He's um, not comparing rape he's allegations. Comparing he's comparing well. what he went through yes. okay, off of sorry, that to just... what people are going through right now. No, you can't compare both because what? Your actions have consequences. Yes. You, when you were doing those things mm. or what you were accused of doing, you mm-hmm. should know that if this comes back, it's going to bite me in the behind. Mm-hmm. I never bargained for COVID-19. COVID-19. You it just any, came. You didn't so have any part there's to no play compa- in regards to that. I didn't have any part in the pandemic. Oh, maybe the person that ate the bats or fish. Yeah, or so you, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a very, very wrong comparison. If you ask me, the message powerful, yes. Yes. But that comparison, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No for me. Um, I like that he has spoken. If I'm going to just move away from his comments because that doesn't make sense to me. But I like that he has come out to speak since two years ago when this thing started. He hasn't really said much about anything. He does deny it because that would be the legally right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But even in this message, I think he kind of also like revealed his flaws in regards to sexual uh, uh, um, um, exploitations and how he has a lot of issues and he's been like, um, um, what's the word? Closeted. Um, for a long time, and that has caused perva- perversion and all that type of stuff. And talked about his trauma and blah 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 and blah blah blah. He's a great actor, somebody I've actually like enjoyed watching for a long time. But he did what he did, um, and it's good to really focus on that because I think that men, in regards to the Me Too movement, are not listened to well enough mm-hmm. um, in regards to them being victims as well. So I really try my best not to give o- um, an over over empathy. undeserved empathy to somebody who has hurt people. Um, but it's it, he has every right to still like go through his process and feel the emotions that he's feeling and and we need to give him the space for him to grow and change and evolve and he's doing that he's going to rehab and talking to the people he needs to talk to blah 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 but it's not it's not the same fam we i get has he boy. been convicted of anyone no. no okay so i'm just going to stand on the premise of that to say that um i mean i watched the video i took my time because i don't want to be it is be mm. situation i'm just looking at what people wrote out and picking out the ones you know i watched it and i felt like he wasn't in any way trying to say he did it or he did not do it. There wasn't a, from, from my own understanding, he wasn't trying to justify himself or to say I did not do it. What he focused on was what, like you said, the consequences of 
the said action. And when it comes to the pandemic, we can say we did not do anything to get to this point right now. But at, this, at, the, at the end of the day, we still have to deal with the things that he has mentioned that he has had to deal with when this whole like thing came down. Yeah, people are people are losing their that jobs and they reputation. cannot do anything well, about well, it. Well, well, he was not talking about his reputation. But he that's the reason why he lost his job. Anyway, mm -hmm. all I'm saying and then he's is standing in the in the. Uh, I'm not saying he's guilty or innocent that. based on legalities he has not been convicted so i don't even have the right to say come out and say no, oh you I are extremely yeah action. i mean that's what i'm saying as well so i don't have the right so based on that and what he is saying now i totally agree with his message i totally understand where he's coming from and i get the fact that this these are times that i had for people to actually making decisions and when you know you are, you've lost your job is it for people not to even understand it for those that have lost a lot of things this period like you've always said on this table it's not the same for everybody yes it's hitting everybody Everybody. but it is not the same there are people that are in a sector that their job is guaranteed to a certain level and let's be fair i think we are in that sector to to a a, a, a good level right but there are sectors that they cannot understand what is going to happen to them in, even in the next one year and they are facing this now and it means that they also have to sit back to think about it and understand what they are going to do for themselves and what the next step is and which is what he's comparing not exactly oh we did something to cause covid 19 or i don't think that's where he's coming from in my own opinion anyway all righty all right it's time for a quick break but when we come back we definitely have more to discuss Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Now? <laughs> <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling all right. Make music and people are still by. Some say they look myself minimal. Are you? Mm. Mm. Music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping early. Sleep early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is TOT Time on Plus TV Africa. Madonna says she contracted coronavirus in France after testing positive for antibodies. Explaining the, uh, the current situation, she said she is not sick at the moment. And quote, when you test positive for antibodies, it means you had the virus, which I clearly did as I was sick at the end of my tour in Paris over seven weeks ago, along with many other artists in my show. But at the time, we all thought we had a very bad flu. Thank God we are all healthy and well now. Knowledge is power. End of quote. Mm. I'm just happy that um, she's Helen Arty and um, I think people need to know that when you have the antibody, it just means that you've had the virus before. But and I think a lot of people would have these antibodies without even knowing. Yeah, mm. exactly. Like, I'm sure a lot of people that are um, asymptomatic mm. will, would not even know that they had the virus at yeah. some point. You just feel like, oh, I have a terrible cold and at the end of the day. So I think it's a good thing because I had actually read up on the antibodies thing and it's not even for, um, it's to know how many people, it's just for, it's not for, it's basically to keep track of how people have recovered, the death rates and all of that, and to know that, okay, will there be another outbreak or can there be another wave of this Yeah, it's also helping pandemic. the research So it's also well. helping yeah. the research. So I think people need to study more and just, because coronavirus is a novel virus, it keeps growing every single day. So I think people should just keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, because there's the new developments day by day. I was a bit confused how like many artists had it and they were not tested and well she didn't really imply that she was tested either mm -hmm. and so it made me so it made me kind of find it hard to believe that there were a lot of people that were very sick and they had a flu and then that was it like I don't know the story just I don't know it, it just didn't up. yeah for me personally um it, not that no one showed symptoms. They did show symptoms, but it was very mild, and there was a lot of them, and it was very mild, and then they, it just left, and I don't know. 
it shared not say with me, I don't know. It just sounded like she really had she had a really bad flu. But then if it's anti because when I was re reading up on antibodies, I wanted to find out if you could um, have proven that the person had coronavirus without a test done. And I didn't see any any um, evidence of that. So I'm not saying she didn't have it. I'm just saying that it was a bit weird for me reading that. Like I didn't I don't I didn't get it. I think there's a separate test from the coronavirus test and antibodies test. Yes. You know, exactly. So how so, do we prove that she had coronavirus? Because um, she thinks so. No, not because she know. thinks so. I think the antibodies test would show that you once had coronavirus. Okay. That's, well, that's what, exactly yeah, what I was looking it for. Would and show I didn't that see. Because I asked, like, would you, uh, the, the, when they're talking about antibodies, they asked if you would be able to tell that the person had coronavirus before without getting COVID 19 test. And there was no, no I think the antibodies would show that okay. you once had coronavirus. All right. Well, then, either way, it's going We'll leave that no, to the medical was... practitioners. Yeah, but that was what I saw as well, which was what she explained. Mm -hmm. That once the antibodies will actually show um, the virus you suffered and got um, healed from. Healed. So, yeah, okay. you would know. And that's awesome. Either way, it would have been awesome that she felt better. I mean, she's 61. So, like, yeah. it's a big deal. Actually, yeah, it's a big what, deal. What I thought you were going to talk about is um, the people who fell sick and the people who had to come in contact with them. Because I, 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 one thing I didn't get to do now is to find out when exactly she was done with this um, um, her tour. Because I remember mm. we had a conversation about her tour where she was cancelling a lot. And we're I saying why, was you last know. year, like late last yeah, year. So, if, if this was happening when coronavirus was not um, really the focus where she was at the time. It's possible mm. that you just keep treating normal flu and flu, cold yeah. without Shoulder. even thinking Shoulder. of um, testing for coronavirus. It's just like someone who probably traveled to, for example, Wuhan in China in November and then come back to Nigeria and you have malaria or, or you feel um, flu. Nobody's going to think of coronavirus. They're mm -hmm. just going to treat you. And if you're lucky and you're the strong type, you get better, you know. So it's quite possible. I'm and sure a lot time, of people. Like said, it's, uh, it's I'm sure a lot of people are sitting on that table right now. Yeah, like, of course, definitely. They, they of have course. recovered and I think from coronavirus that's why it's bad and they in still America, haven't been tested. Because America has one of the largest populations of, of, of um, Asian communities and travel. Mm -hmm. like people who are capable of traveling as mm -hmm. well. So what you see is that that number that you're seeing, like 70, 72,000 people who have been contacted, is because for the longest time time there was no communication with him from the agents from china to um say that there was a pandemic so people have been going around spreading the virus mm -hmm. to a lot of people yes madonna is lucky but i'm, I'm sure i'm sure now everyone that they came in contact with was lucky enough to to have this story yeah, yeah. that's another thing Okay, um, moving on. So yesterday, Igbo people were trending for different reasons. The conversation started from a tweet by Ada Usiso Eko, um, where she said, we are not, quote, we are not ready to discuss how Igbo babes legit leave their boyfriends to marry their husbands. You will be dating someone and boom. Igbanko was in next week. No girls at all. Beautiful, heartless queens, end of quote. Now, many people jumped on that to share their experiences and the conversations moved on to Igbo apprenticeship. Popular Nigerian blogger Noble Igwe in a tweet said, and quote, they won't tweet that the Igbo apprenticeship had boys forgetting the idea of going to school so that the scanty resources would be used to send their younger ones to school and with the hope that Mwa boy will become successful and uplift his family. The Igbo apprenticeship was designed for the rich to take out families from poverty. Um, okay, that's a lot of Igbo, but something like Igbo boy is like Ikumwa, both designed with a settlement plan at the end of it all. Yeah. Okay, so um, on this one, I think it's, um, how do I say it now? I think it's, there's an element of truth in it, but I think it's um, across all ethnic groups. It's not just the... Mm, if we were talking about Igbo people today now. Yes, but I'm just saying that it's not just the Igbo people. I'm, Are you I saying think... this apprenticeship thing is like a national thing? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you ask me, because we have Yoruba people too that go to go and learn different trades and then the girls get to go to school and then so that they can take care of the family. But I totally agree with Nobu Igwe on this one. I think it was completely I have right. to agree that it's a national thing, but I think for Igbos it's a lot, lot more, more common yeah, true, and it's something true. that's, I think, wired in um, culture as well, which is why I would give it to them if they're going to own that thing. Because I think Yorubas tend to do more school for everyone than mm. just um, um, 
males, but Igbos are a lot more. Like I know uh, something I, I used to say in, in uni, like all my friends that were Igbos, their dads were uneducated. Most of them, mm. their dads were uneducated. It was like a thing. But they sent them to really good schools that way, and they, what, the mothers will be educated. What I have to say is like I, I, I know people don't really hear this part of feminism, but this is also a feminist problem. Um, when one um, gender is oppressed, the other is overwhelmed. That's just what you have. So the only thing I'm going to disagree with is that. Um, I, think, I still think that women should be given the choice to also choose whether or not they want to do apprenticeship or whether or not they want to go, go to school. I, I, find it, uh, I find it to be wrong if you're going to force every single man to go and look for money outside and then force every girl to be at home. I think it should be equal, again, which is the core of the movement. It should be equal for everyone to have the choice because not every girl wants to sit at home and I'm sure not every guy wants to go um, work in an apprenticeship thing and go home. But it is a problem for men. You and know, I think that there's an overwhelming responsibility placed on men, especially in this country. You, and it's breeding very entitled women and it's breeding very like overwhelmed, toxic masculinity um, masculine men in the country so i have to agree with what um noble, um, noble is saying but i don't i don't think that then because i his tone is kind of giving me like then we have a bigger problem i don't think they have a bigger problem i think it's a, just a general problem well, i hope you also know that um in most cases when these men are being sent out to go and learn different trades is because they cannot afford to send the both of them to school so one person so one goes, person to, school goes other... to school and then while you are working you're sending money home to school to train the other person mm -hmm. so sometimes it's 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 a sacrifice, sacrifice. yes mm. anyway let's take some reactions at ogbeni Dipo says they practice that should that this is a practice that should be taught at harvard and other world-class business schools by the way nigerians specifically Igbos who have the first-hand knowledge are the ones who, sh who should write the stories, turn them to case studies and propagate them. The world will listen. Achuka Obi says, at age eight, we moved to Folaguru to a house owned by an Igbo businessman. Almost all the other eight flats were occupied by his former Nwa boys, who now had Nwa boys of their own. It was an education. It always reminded me of Jacob serving Laban and waiting for Laban to settle him. And the final one we can take is Okonkwo Ikenna. He says, when I gained admission into university was the same time my cousin started going to shop with his dad. We spent the same um, duration in both pursuits. Today, he wants to buy Uber for me to drive. There is something they teach them in the Igbo approach apprenticeship that you can't learn outside. Yeah. Mm. And I don't think that's fair to restrict it to gender. I think everyone needs that kind of skill. Because I, <clears throat> I've seen Igbo boys that are not good at doing business. So. Mm -hmm. Like, it's they are terrible. And I feel like if you... So you're saying they should give more everyone, of Everyone. I, I think you because should. I don't think it's, it's, it's never... It's, it's, I don't think it's a choice thing. It's a case of, okay, you are the man. Go Which and hustle. Let's send the girl to school yes. or something like that. Because I know men that are very inclined to do apprenticeship, and I don't think they have any space for school. To be honest, they do really bad at school, but they fix everything in the house. But I know women just like that, mm. and then they do bad at school. So I think it should be the convert. This this to me is really good because maybe not in Nigeria, but a lot of other developed countries really value um, handwork, like plumbing, electrician, all that type of stuff. Like it's an important skill. But then I think that it shouldn't be about males. It should be about like listening Everybody. to your children. What's their strength? and then whoever can go outside like in my house I'm not even going to lie I feel like if you put this situation in my house I should be the one doing apprenticeship not my brothers I'm telling you like they're just better at my, okay. my, the one brother is, oh, is good with like um, IT and whatever and doesn't want to be in the sun mm. or whatever but I well, like the, getting the hands dirty the apprenticeship thing is not necessarily um, fixing things actually most times it's just container has landed they are selling it's business it is pure calculation mm. so you are there being the person working with the big boss for i think it's usually seven years actually so after seven years he has to give you a substantial amount of money that would set you up that's mm. rent your shop stock up your shop and set you up in your own line of business but, so it's not actually but can you see how that's a big that. problem yeah. because then if you are empowering men Whatever your reasons are, if you empower women to but stand women alone, to school, but you're not empowering women to stand alone. And that's why there's an obsession with marriage, because if I don't tap into your blessing, to I'm going to be stuck. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, so Sitting now you, you love the I'll, idea or the system, but you want them to extend it yes. to the to women, women as, well. as well. Okay, makes sense. And I think that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and do join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or Twitter Twitter Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by visiting our YouTube channel and also please do subscribe at Plus TV Africa. Watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my amazing co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshankeye and the end 
entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay safe.